Hello everyone, and welcome to the 10 Days of JavaScript, which is the first chapter in my upcoming Full Stack JavaScript course. In this first chapter, we are going to give you a rock solid foundation that you can build a career on top of, and no prior experience or knowledge is required. So even if you have zero experience with computer programming in general, or maybe if you've never even heard of JavaScript, this is the perfect place to get started. Okay, so right now in video number one, day number one, we're gonna get started in about 30 seconds from now. But first, I just wanna say that JavaScript is much bigger than the web browser. In the modern era, JavaScript can be used for just about anything. Having said that, we are indeed going to begin in the web browser because it's super accessible, right? It's something that every computer already has. So this way you don't need to go download and install anything fancy or extra. Your computer already has a web browser on it. So right here, right now, we are gonna get started, get your hands dirty, and have you write your first bit of JavaScript code. So right now, I want you to follow along with me, and I want you to open up google.com in a new tab or a new window. Technically, it doesn't need to be google.com. It could be any website that you want to visit. Okay, but the important part is that I want you to right click somewhere on the web page, and in the menu that pops up, I want you to choose the inspect option. I'm using Google Chrome as my web browser. You could also use Firefox. The newest versions of Microsoft Edge are also excellent. And if you want to use Safari, you'll need to go into the advanced preferences and enable the develop menu. Anyways, the point is, is that no matter what you're using as your web browser, if you right click somewhere on the page, you should see an inspect option. And I want you to click that. Okay, and that's going to open up your developer tools. It might be a separate window like this, or it might be attached to the bottom of your screen, but either way, within this developer tools area, I want you to look for something called the console. Once you've found console, go ahead and click on it. If you're having a hard time finding the console tab, you might just want to perform a quick Google search for how do I open the console in blank? And you would replace blank with the name of the web browser that you're using. So maybe Chrome or Firefox or Microsoft Edge or Safari. Because there are keyboard shortcuts that you can press to directly open the console. And that's a bit easier, but I'm not going to run through those because they're different for each web browser and operating system. Okay, but the idea is once you have successfully opened the console, you should see some sort of symbol or a blinking cursor about here, or it might be closer to the bottom. But the idea here is this is where we can experiment with JavaScript code. Or in other words, this is where we can type and tell the web browser what to do. So for example, we see my cursor blinking here. And if on my keyboard I say two plus two and press enter, we see four. Let me make this a bit easier to read, and let's try something else. So maybe five times five. So five asterisk five, press enter, 25. Now at this point, you might be thinking to yourself that this is not impressive at all because you've seen addition before and you've seen multiplication before, right? We've all used a calculator. What does this have to do with JavaScript and learning how to program? Well, believe it or not, these lines of code, so 2 plus 2 and 5 asterisk 5, these are lines of JavaScript. And we just used JavaScript code to make the computer solve these or evaluate these for us. Okay, but as you might have guessed, computers can do much more than just basic arithmetic. One of the most useful things that computers can do is store values in memory. Let me show you what I mean. I want you to type this out with me in your console. If I type let, and then a space, and then my favorite number space equals, and then just pick a number at random, right? Whatever your favorite or whatever your lucky number is. So in my case, let my favorite number equal seven. And then press enter. 
and we just stored this value in memory. So check this out. Let's try something new. Let's say 10 plus, let's say my favorite number. If we press enter or return, we see 17, right? Because we set this, my favorite number, to equal or to have a value of seven. So 10 plus seven is 17. And we can store more than just numbers. So for example, we could try storing our name in memory. Type this out with me. Let my name equal, and then open up a quote. You can use a single quote or a double quote, it's up to you. And then type in your name and then close out the quote. Just make sure your quotes are consistent. So if you use a double quote at the beginning, use a double quote at the end. In case you're wondering why we're using quotes this time, it's because in JavaScript, if you're just dealing with a number, that doesn't need quotes because a number is a special type of data. But if you want a string of text, right, like a name or word, a sentence, or even a paragraph, in JavaScript, we call that a string of text or just a string, and we always wanna wrap that in quotes. So you would type in your name, right, and wrap it in quotes, and then press enter. Okay, and we just stored that in memory. So now if you ever wanna use it again, you can just type in my name, press enter, and it's going to give you your name. Or for a more useful example, we could open up a string of text and say, hello, my name is, and then a space, and then close out the quote. And then after that, let's add on, so the addition symbol, and then let's type in this label name of where we stored the value, so my name, and then let's add on a closing period to close out the sentence, right? So quotation, period, close out the quote, press enter, and the computer adds all of this up for us and generates, hello, my name is Brad, and closes the sentence out with a period. So you can see that addition is not only for numbers. We can also add strings of text together. If you're still a little bit confused on the difference between a number and a string, let me show you this quick example. So when we say two plus two, we get four. However, if we opened up a quote and said two, closed out the quote, and then plus, and then quote two, close out the quote, if I press enter here, we see 22, which doesn't make any sense mathematically. This is because when you wrap something in quotes, JavaScript is not going to treat it as a number, it's going to treat it as a string of text and interpret it quite literally, right? So it's just going to squish these together. 2, 2. Without the quotes, JavaScript knows to interpret these as actual numbers. Now, if this distinction between numbers and strings of text is still not clear, don't worry about it. This is a topic that we will address again later on in future lessons. Trust me, we are going to learn through repetition. Okay, now finally, let's get to the truly interesting part of this lesson. So we've seen that we can store values in memory, right? So we stored my favorite number and we stored my name. And these are labels that I just made up. There's nothing special about the phrase my favorite number or my name, right? So you could have said let unicorn equal 12 or let pizza equal cheese. As long as your label name starts with a letter, and doesn't contain any spaces in it, you can basically create any label name that you want. Okay, that was a bit of a tangent. Anyways, the idea is we've seen that we can store values in memory with our own custom labels, but the really interesting part is that the environment also stores a ton of its own values in memory. Now, when I say environment, what do I mean? Well, in this case, the web browser is our environment. So, for example, the web browser is storing the title of this web page in memory. In my case, that's Google or whichever web page you were visiting. Now check this out. We can actually use JavaScript code to manipulate this title that we see right here. 
So back in our console, I want you to follow along with me. So just like we made up labels like my favorite number or my name or unicorn or pizza, well, the web browser environment has created a label or object named document. Now I just used a new word there, object. At this point, we have no idea what an object is. Don't worry, we're going to learn about objects in lesson number three. But for now, all you need to know is that we can look inside an object with a period. And then the document object contains a property named title. So if we say document.title and then press enter, we see Google or the title of whichever web page you're visiting. Now here is where things finally get interesting and we start to see the big picture. We can update or manipulate the value of this property and the web browser will use that new value. So if we wanted to change this, instead of saying Google to saying something random, we could just say document.title equals, and then a string of text, so quotes, and maybe I'll just say hello and end the quote, press enter, and you can see up in my tab for the web browser, we now see hello instead of Google. Cool, now let's try one more example task before we bring this lesson to a close. Let's try to use JavaScript code to change the background color of Google from white to maybe a light blue or any other color that you would choose. So back in the console, check this out. We can say document.body dot style dot background color. So I'll give you a minute to type that out. Again, remember that the dot or period is how you look inside an object for other properties. We will learn more about objects in future lessons, but for now you could almost think of this as a Russian stacking doll. You know the dolls where one is slightly smaller and it fits inside the other? That's basically what's going on here. So document contains a property named body, body contains a property named style, and style contains a property named background color. And make sure you type the C in color here as a capital, an uppercase C, because this is case sensitive. Anyways, so after that we can say equals, and then in quotes you can choose any color name you want. So I'm gonna say light blue, uh, but you could say yellow or orange or green. Just type out a really common color name that you can think of. And as soon as I press enter, you can see the web page updated. Cool. Now that's going to bring the hands on portion of this lesson to a close, but I do have a quick review for you. So the takeaway for this lesson is the idea of values, storing values in memory accessing those values, and then even assigning or updating to new different values. Because at its core, that's really all programming is, working with values. Now before we jump into lesson number two, I do wanna stress the fact that these words, like document and body and style and background color, these words are not part of the JavaScript language itself. So just like earlier when you and I chose words like my favorite number and my name and unicorn and pizza, just like we did that, the web browser environment chose the words document and body, style and background color. These words have no meaning outside the context of the web browser environment. So just like you might have a word or phrase in your family, that doesn't have meaning outside the context of your home. Because remember, the web browser is just one of many different JavaScript environments. Later on in the course, we will learn about the Node environment, which can be used as a server, and also the MongoDB environment, which is used for storing and retrieving data in a database. So long story short, at this point in the course, I do not want you to worry about trying to memorize these words that you see here. This is just environmental jargon that the web browser uses. 
We can start to remember some of these key property names later on in the course, but for now, I want you to focus on the equal sign and the quotes and the periods and the plus symbols that we used earlier, right? Because that is the skeleton and the core of the JavaScript language itself. It's the aspect that never changes regardless of environment. Anyways, congratulations on writing your first bit of JavaScript in this lesson. You got your hands dirty with code, which is already more than most people can say. I've got a quick vocabulary note at the end here. Throughout this lesson, you heard me refer to things like my favorite number and my name as labels. Label is not the technical term. I just made that up to try and make the lesson more understandable or less intimidating. The technical term is that this is a variable. In the example that I'm highlighting right now, we stored the value of seven within a variable named my favorite number. So the technical term, instead of label, we would refer to this as the identifier for the variable. Cool, so I like to strike a balance between using easy to understand language, but also letting you know the technical names for everything. All right, now looking ahead to our very next lesson, we are going to learn about one of the most important ideas in all of programming, and that is functions. So what in the world is a function? Well, let's answer that question. Let's keep our momentum rolling, and I will see you in the next lesson. The 10 Days of JavaScript is the first chapter for my upcoming premium course, Full Stack JavaScript from Scratch. I'm making these first 10 or 11 videos freely available on YouTube. And so for the next 10 days, I'm going to upload one new video each day. So stay tuned, or if you're watching this in the future, all the lessons are up, so feel free to binge watch. The full premium course is not available just yet, but if you subscribe to this channel, you'll be notified as soon as it's out. Or if you're watching this video in the future, it's already available. Enjoy.